should you actually be investing in Minamoto in rise of kingdoms in 2022 what's going on guys cheers so ever since the museum came into the game and Minamoto got his own relic, a lot of players have been talking about him. Many people were quick to comment on my last video talking about how good the reports were with Zhang Yu and Minamoto secondary in a rally scenario. And of course we saw other content creators testing Minamoto out, seeing how good he actually is. Because if you guys didn't know, Minamoto got a significant buff with his new relic. He got 45% of stats. That's an insane amount amount of stats which sounds like a no-brainer right I mean if you're looking at a legendary commander who gets 45 percent of stats that's just it's raw stats it's insane so I'm here to talk about this with you guys and we're going to be breaking it all down now for this first part of the video I want to go over the skills of Minamoto as well as the talent builds that I think you should use this is mainly for those players who are new to the game or maybe you just need a refresher as to what Minamoto does because you got him so long ago you haven't really considered him there will be timestamps you can skip this section if you already know everything about Minamoto and you just want to know my opinions so Minamoto is a single target damage factor machine he is an absolute beast at dealing insane amounts of single target damage factor to one target his primary skill when he's not expertise is dealing a 1400 damage factor with a 50 percent chance of dealing an additional 600 damage factor each second for two seconds we can see that here so that's a 50 percent chance of almost doubling the amount of damage factor that he's doing which is really nice when he's expertise there's a 75 percent chance that he's almost doubling that active skill damage which is crazy I mean that really is incredible if you look at even the newest greatest commander somebody like Gilgamesh he only deals 1500 damage factor to a single target now Gilgamesh does have an insane health debuff so that is where a lot of his power comes from but from a raw damage perspective Minamoto really does go toe to toe with the best of them when it comes to damage factor now there's really only one other thing about Minamoto that's really great and we'll talk about that in a second but his second skill is strictly for cavalry and you get 10 percent March speed 20% attack this really sort of falls short in today's meta especially the season of conquest commanders this is just not that much stats uh which is why people don't really use him in season of conquest but now that he has 45 percent more stats people are starting to reconsider his third skill only for dealing damage to barbarians this is actually one of the things that uh, Minamoto does shine at uh, which sounds weird like killing barbarians whatever but he's very good for PvE and we'll talk about that later his fourth skill is really interesting and I think this is what a lot of people forget about Minamoto is that this debuff is really actually pretty powerful there's a 10 percent chance that the target takes 30 percent increased damage for three seconds and you can trigger once every five seconds which is really really nice so if you're hitting a target and it starts to get swarmed that target is going to take 30 percent more damage from everybody who's hitting it this is especially good in things like Ark of Osiris for example if you're hitting a structure you could swarm it which is really good and and swarming structures and swarming players obviously players has been a thing that has been more popular lately just brute forcing things uh has become really really popular which is really interesting to see so this is this warlord uh fourth skill is definitely one that i think players do forget about and we've already discussed his expertise when it comes to open field pvp combat this is my favorite talent build for minamoto you go all the way to the end of the cavalry tree just get everything in here you also obviously want undying fury for the additional rage and Minamoto is one of the commanders that does actually benefit from latent power which is important because a lot of your skill damage is going to come from that additional damage so that's really nice there you grab the uh, heraldic shield and tactical mastery I think that stuff is really self-explanatory and then you throw your last point in this health right in the middle of the uh, cavalry tree I'm not a huge fan of equestrian excellence but it's up to you if you want that instead of a uh, latent power I don't really think it's a great choice if you wanted to just like hop out of your city and poke a target then maybe you could go all the way up to feral nature instead of going all the way up to rally and cry but realistically I feel like after kvk1 you're never really going to use Minamoto as a primary unless you're doing pve content and right now I think a lot of players are talking about Minamoto as a secondary commander to somebody like Zhang Yu so we're going to talk about that in just a second okay so we know Minamoto deals tons of single target damage factor we know that he has a really powerful and sort of unique debuff on that fourth skill and we know that Minamoto is very powerful in pre-KVK, 
and also pretty powerful in kvk1 as well beyond that he's great at rallying pve objectives you still see players using using uh, minamoto in season of conquest to rally some pve objectives unless you have mega whales in your kingdom that have like invested in moctezuma for example but you can also still use him for some of those high level forts in the uh, kvk season of conquest things like that he's also great for things like karak ceremony where you're going to be rallying some of those high end karak bosses you may want to use something a little bit more tanky but you could use minamoto if you wanted to he's also decent in game modes that just deal single target damage factor like ian's ballads or soroli crisis things like that you're gonna get some use out of minamoto and for a while i was using my minamoto in these game modes and outclassing some people with like guan yu and leonidas from a damage perspective because you just deal so much single target damage factor and finally you can also use him to destroy barbarians i mean he's all cavalry he's very fast especially with south south secondary and just running around the map just melting barbarians is maybe something that some of you may find useful but there's also a lot of cons with minamoto okay he's not very useful in season two of kvk and even beyond season two of kvk season three and four he's even worse like right season two you know a lot of players migrate back to season two of kvk and so if you end up in a kvk with lots of older players he's not useful at all in season two if you end up you know if you're in like a dc kingdom and you end up in a kvk2 with a lot of just weaker kingdoms and all new players then yeah sure you could probably use minamoto for a little bit and it might be okay but ultimately he's not great after season two now he did get this relic which again we will talk about the relic in my opinions on that relic in just a moment uh but we also want to talk about some of the other cons with him okay and the other con is that he's 200 dollars like to max him out 200 bucks you got to be able to, you got to be willing to max him out okay now you could just buy enough bundles to get him to 5511 which is i think about 30 dollars worth if you buy the proper bundles and he's decent there right i mean you do get the full march speed and attack which is nice but you're really missing out on that fourth skill and the expertise is nice for the single target damage factor so it's up to you if it's worth it i think 5511 is solid definitely not worth going for the 5515 i think if you're gonna do that like just just expertise him so it really makes you wonder like is it worth 200 dollars for a commander that from a pvp perspective isn't really going to be useful after the first like six months you're not really going to get that much pvp use out of him after that until they released the relic that you see in the museum ever since the relic for minamoto has come out there's been tons of testing being done i mean chisco made an entire video talking about zangyu primary with minamoto secondary compared to Zhang Yu primary with Chandra Gupta secondary and everybody's freaking out right everyone's looking at reports like this and saying like oh my god Guan Leo is like the open field pair that everyone thinks about and we see Minamoto Tao Tao beating it now that it has the relic now a shout out to I think it was snake who put this in my discord I don't know more about this specific report that we're looking at right like what are the actual skills we don't know if this is a five five whatever Leonidas five five one one what what exactly are they it doesn't look like their expertise we don't know the equipment on these commanders we don't know anything but what we do know especially from looking at somebody like Chisco's video we do know that this new relic does sort of move the needle in a vacuum okay if we're looking at a single rally hitting a single target it will do well and in some instances it may on paper do better than Chandra Gupta and so people are using these you know these vacuum tests as proof that Minamoto is so good as a secondary now which I just don't think is the case and here why besides this 20 percent defense minamoto and zhang yu have no defensive capability literally zero there's nothing besides this 20 percent defense and what that means is that if you are in the open field with a zhang yu minamoto uh, you're going to get swarmed you are going to get instantly melted for sure and you will lose those trades and guess what it's it's gonna happen people are gonna see the Zhang Yu they're gonna know the Zhang Yu is a huge threat in the open field because of that massive AoE damage and as soon as they see the Minamoto pop a skill on this uh, after, as a secondary 
it's it's gg it's game over they are going to swarm you down and there's really nothing that you can do about it now sure you are a cavalry march so maybe you can run away or something like that but running away from a fight is not you don't want to go into a fight thinking oh well i could always run away like you want to go in there and just crush skulls boys we already know that's the deal now when you look at zhang Yu and minamoto from a rally perspective in a real kvk you would just swarm that down right like like i, I don't know i don't see why you wouldn't it just seems like a no-brainer like yeah just swarm it down like what are you gonna do like like the reason that Chandra Gupta is so good as a secondary is because his active skill gives him 40 percent bonus damage for three seconds if you're swarming that down that's gonna hurt and on top of that he's got the health bonus he's got a 20 percent health bonus so there's things about Chandra Gupta that make him really good as a secondary commander and sure Minamoto does a lot of single target damage factor so in a vacuum having him as secondary with Zhang Yu and just doing a single target test then sure of course it's going to perform really well like obviously that's going to be the case but in a real world perspective I think a Zangyu Minamoto is going to get melted swarmed down like nine times out of ten now you can make the argument that like a Zangyu Minamoto could be used as like a debuffing rally right like maybe if you already control the open field and things are going as planned and somebody counter rallies you then you can counter rally that counter rally and sort of debuff that target and then sure okay sure that's totally something you could do but this video is about whether or not you should invest in Minamoto in 2022 now that we have the relic in the game and I think my ultimate conclusion is still no I don't really think Minamoto is a great investment if you want to spend a little bit on him to get him to 5511 and use him in you know PVE scenarios then maybe sure okay that sounds good but if you're planning on rushing out to max Minamoto skills so that way when you get to season of conquest you can unlock his relic and have a great secondary cavalry commander to whoever you invest in I just don't think it's gonna be a great long-term strategy and the other thing to keep in mind right is that let's say you're not going to use Zhang Yu primary right because we, we've talked a lot about Zhang Yu primary but you could always say Omniarch you could always use like a Saladin right you could do a Saladin primary and he's got the support tree and he's a little bit more tanky he's brought he's got some defense right and sure that, that's true right Saladin is is really a good cavalry commander especially as a primary because he's a little bit more tanky but the problem with that is that you have better options with Saladin you could easily just pair him with William and then you could just forget about Minamoto it, am I saying that a Saladin William is gonna perform better and get you better trades than a Saladin Minamoto with the relic in a vacuum in a 1v1 scenario maybe not right I, I think I mean Minamoto does a ton of single target damage factor that's fine but the utility that William brings in his AoE and his fourth skill there's just so much to love about him there's just so much to love about William the first he's a very good secondary commander and you don't have to expertise him for him to be very very good I mean a Saladin William is really a budget build that even if it doesn't do best in a 1v1 scenario against maybe a Saladin Minamoto I still think the overall value of that combination is better and if all of that still hasn't convinced you that Minamoto isn't magically going to be the next meta I'm going to remind you that we've got Nevsky on the way we like he's literally about to be here okay and if you look at the kit for Nevsky it's just gonna blow Minamoto out of the water I mean he's got a ton of single target damage factor and he's got a really nice enemy defense reduction he's got cavalry attack if he's in enemy territory he gets cavalry health as well which is one of the things that we love about Chandra Gupta he's got cavalry defense he's got damage bonus for cavalry he's got so many things he's got the skill damage improvement like it, it, there's so much about Nevsky that that on its own like this is a whole separate video but I think Zangyu Nevsky is going to be insane right I think it's just going to be an insane rally combination and to have players out there debating whether or not Minamoto is going to be like a viable thing it's like dude did we forget about Nevsky already like what like dude he's going to be good okay he's going to be really good and if you invest uh, 200 dollars to max Minamoto plus whatever money it costs to get the relic plus all the gear it's it's just not worth it in 2022 unless you're a brand new player who is planning to well for pre kvk and kvk1 if that's the case then sure sure go ahead and get him like you'll get great value out of him in the early game and then later down the line you can use him for pve that's you know it's your money you can do whatever you want but if you're a season of conquest player 
uh who is who's considering buying minamoto just for the first time now because of his relic don't do it okay nevsky is going to be on the wheel of fortune we know this so even free to play players are going to be able to at least unlock nevsky and level him up over time for free whereas minamoto costs 200 bucks plus the relic and on a final note okay the echoes of history okay the 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 museum in a rise of kingdoms boys i i, I gotta say i feel kind of dumb that they're trying to charge us for a buff to a commander that costs 200 dollars. is anybody else pissed about that so they implemented the museum because they know that these older commanders need a buff that's literally why they did it like literally they're like hey these commanders are the old commanders and old new players versus old players like these are what they're using and it's not good enough compared to the new stuff so we need to buff it that's literally what they said so they agree that they need a buff so what you're telling me is that i spent 200 dollars maxing out minamoto and then now that he needs a buff i have to go through a system in order to unlock that buff that will make him somewhat competitively viable and unless i want to take a year or longer to do it for free i have to spend money to buy a buff for a commander that needs it but boys back in my day okay back in my day playing modern warfare 3 or something okay you're playing a game that if a gun needs a buff the developers would just put the buff in okay it's game balance and the thing about game balance is that if there's game balance players keep playing okay that's why they constantly are tweaking commanders or, or i should say characters in league of legends okay you play a game like league of legends totally free to play all right and those they get tweaked for free all the time it's not like oh master Yi needs a buff here's a bundle for 50 dollars. what the f dude game balance is what keeps players playing why would you put game balance behind a paywall why am i supposed to pay ten dollars for a battle pass or forty dollars for a bundle just so i can unlock a buff for a commander that i already spent two hundred dollars on Lilith, what the fuck? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? It's game balance. That's literally your only job is to balance the game, and you instead of doing that, put it behind a paywall. Holy sh imagine spending a thousand dollars on an iPhone, and then as soon as there's a security vulnerability, they have to release a patch, but no no, the patch is not free, it's forty dollars. Like it's your job to do that. I'm the consumer. I already paid for it. Why do I have to pay for you to fix it later? It doesn't make any sense to me that there's fucking there's bundles for game balance, dude. There's literally bundles for game balance in 2022 i cannot believe this is the state of gaming but we're off on a tangent at this point so boys uh i say don't buy minamoto unless you're a whale or you want to whale in the early seasons of your account with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it comment down below your thoughts on minamoto i would love to hear from you guys if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk Talk to you guys again soon. Peace.